For a measly $25, these two boards right here, plus a little bit of ChatGPT magic in the Home Assistant platform, you can build your own voice assistant that controls your entire smart home. Really? It's so powerful, it practically replaces the need for these entirely. Really? Today we're going to build the Wyoming Voice Satellite, built by the brilliant Home Assistant team. We're going to name our voice assistant Jarvis, and then we're going to install it into the ceiling of our home. Are you ready? Let's go. All right, so let's talk about some of the hardware that you're going to need. The most important piece, obviously, is the Raspberry Pi Zero 2W. It's about $15. I'll put a link in the description below. You'll notice this one does not come with the headers on it. You can buy versions that have the headers pre-installed. That's up to you. Today we are going to install our own headers and we'll do it with this header rig so that we don't have to do any soldering. The other thing you're going to need is a uh, RE speaker uh, two mic Pi hat. These are around $9 and you'll see that they actually connect into the header pins. You're also going to need a uh, micro SD card. I got this 32 gigabyte one for like eight bucks. And then it's optional, but you could get a case, which I have right here, and it comes with a convenient little like uh, power on, power off button. So let's go ahead and get the header pins installed and then we'll uh, jump into the software. The ones that came with the Raspberry Pi, you have to solder and we don't want to do any soldering today, so take these pins, put them aside. In this kit right here, it comes with everything that you need to attach pins without solder. So you need special pins to do this, which is why I said set the other ones aside. Take these, uh, take your Raspberry Pi, mount it, then put in your headers. Just kind of apply a little finger pressure here. And then you're going to take this bar, put it over, and then you're going to hammer that bar. Don't be too hard, don't be too light either. But once you hammer that bar in, you're essentially going to see those pins sticking out the bottom end. Great, so now we have our pins installed. Then we're gonna take our RE speaker Pi Mic Hat and connect these two bad boys together. Now let's talk about getting the software installed on the SD card. Real quick, uh, sorry to bother guys. If you haven't subscribed, commented, liked the video, do all those things. Also, go to futureproofhomes.net if you want a system like this installed for you, or if you just need consulting advice on smart homes. All right, bye. You may already have a USB reader that allows you to plug in your micro SD card. If you don't, a lot of micro SD cards come with an adapter like this. So you can plug the micro SD card into the SD card. And MacBook Pros have a uh, input slot for this. So I'm just gonna plug this directly into the MacBook Pro. This is the tutorial that we're gonna follow today. Okay, the first step is to download the Raspberry Pi OS software. I've already done that, so if I open it up, then I'll select the Raspberry Pi that we're working with, which is the Raspberry Pi 02W. Click Choose OS, Raspberry Pi OS Other. Then go and look for the Raspberry Pi OS 64-bit Legacy Lite. Finally, select the SD card that's in your computer. Click Next. And I'm gonna say Edit Settings here. I'm going to set my host name to Loft Satellite, and I'm going to set the username to Loft Satellite as well. I'm going to create a long password, and then I'm going to put in my 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi SSID and the password. Very important note here, your Raspberry Pi can only connect to a 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi signal. Don't put in a 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi connection. Okay. I also like to set my locale settings to my current time zone. Go to services and tick on enable SSH and then use password authentication. And you can leave all these options at default. Click save. Agree to erase all the content on the SD card and wait a few minutes for it to write the operating system with your settings onto the SD card. A few minutes later. Plug our SD card into the Raspberry Pi. We have HDMI, then we have one USB, and then this is the far USB that you want to use. Take our micro USB cable, plug it in, and you should see that it begins to boot with the LED. Give your Pi around two to four minutes to boot up and connect to your network, and then open up your favorite terminal and type in SSH, the name of your Pi, loft satellite, at loft satellite. Dot local. If for some reason this SSH command is not connecting to your device, 
log in to your router, get the IP address, and now you could say SSH loft satellite at 192.168. Say yes, and then type in the password that you defined earlier. And now we are in. Press PWD, and you'll see that you should be in home slash, and then the name of your device. We now need to follow the steps to install Wyoming protocol onto this Raspberry Pi. Let's do that now. This command is going to make sure that your package manager has all the recent packages and install Git and Python 3. Whenever asked, just press the letter Y and then enter. This next command is actually going to pull down the Wyoming satellite code to your Raspberry Pi. Now we need to install the drivers that help the Raspberry Pi communicate to the RE speaker mic hat that you connected to the top of the headers. Be patient while this installs. Contemplate all your life choices if you want. Don't be too hard on yourself. Seriously, this could take 5 to 10 minutes to install. Just be grateful for the developer who built this. All right, the drivers are installed. Let's reboot our Raspberry Pi. sudo reboot. Watch your router and you should see the Raspberry Pi disconnect from Wi-Fi and then come back online. So again, I'll type in ssh loft satellite at loft satellite .local. Type in your SSH password and you're back in. Now, if you press ls, you should see that you have a Wyoming dash satellite folder. Good job. Okay, now we need to configure our virtual Python environment with all our dependencies and requirements. This can take another three to five minutes. I think I'm going to have a hard seltzer. Don't judge me, it's all I have in my fridge. In case you don't know, black cherry is the best flavor though. All right, let's run the script in the Wyoming satellite directory and make sure that it's actually installed correctly. If you see all the help commands come up, then you're in good shape. Let's move on to configuring the RE speaker. A record L will list all of the microphones capable of recording. If you see this right here, this confirms that your Pi is talking to the mic hat that's installed on the top. Great. Next, let's run this command, and then we'll just talk into the device to record a quick five second clip. This is a test of the emergency broadcast system. Testing one, two, three. And now we're going to list the speakers. And you should see a seed to mic voice card that has all software conversions enabled. Plug in a pair of old school headphones to the headphone jack, and then you should hear your five second recording. Okay, now we're going to create a service that'll be responsible for always starting up the Wyoming satellite whenever you plug in your Pi and boot it up. It'll also be responsible for rebooting the Wyoming satellite software if it ever crashes. So let's follow these steps right here. Copy this sudo systemcdl edit command, and it's going to create a service file. Make sure you're in your Wyoming satellite directory. PWD, present working directory, shows me home, loft satellite, Wyoming satellite. This is the correct directory. Let's run our command, and now we're gonna go and copy the template and paste that. Let's modify this template. The first thing you need to do is look for anywhere that it says home slash pi, right here, for example, and we're going to change it to home slash the name of our user, which is loft satellite. And I see another instance of home slash pi, so we're going to change that to home slash loft satellite. The other thing I like to do is for commands that are very long, if you find the dash dash here, you can put in a slash and then move it to the next line. So I'll do the same thing for URI, slash, enter, move it to the next line, and then the same thing for these parameters as well. This just makes it much easier to read. All right, the last thing we want to do here is name our satellite. This is the name that's going to show up inside Home Assistant. Great. Now we press Control X, then we press the letter Y to save our buffer, and then we press Enter. All right, we've now defined our service. Now we need to start it, and then we're going to go look at the logs inside that service to make sure everything is running correctly. Grab the sudo systemctl enable command, run that, and now your service is started. Grab the next command, which is the journal ctl command, 
and you should see that everything is running as expected. Let's go check Home Assistant and see if it auto-detected our new Wyoming satellite. Go to Settings, Devices and Integration, and there it is, Loft Satellite. Click Configure, Submit, and then specify what area this falls in. Of course, mine falls in the loft. Say Finish, and that's it. Now, if you go down to your Wyoming protocol here, you should see that you have your new loft satellite. Let's keep going with the tutorial. It's worth mentioning here at the bottom that if you need to stop your service for any reason, you could copy this command and execute it. We're not gonna do that right now. We want this service to continue running. In the audio enhancements section, the developer is telling us that we could add a mic auto gain of five and a noise suppression of two. This just helps better voice recognition and I found it to be pretty helpful. So I'm going to copy these two parameters right here. I'm gonna go back to my terminal. And if you press the up arrow key a few times, you'll find your sudo systemctl edit command. Run that again to go in, go down, and let's create a new line and add those parameters in here. Press command X to save this updated file. Press Y to save the buffer. Press enter to exit. The developer mentions here that you could add a dash dash mic volume multiplier, which would basically make the microphone more sensitive. I didn't find this was necessary, so I'm not gonna add this parameter in. Okay, now we're going to install wake word detection locally on the Raspberry Pi. This is actually really amazing that you can do this. A small system on a chip can actually be listening to audio in the room and analyzing it for wake words like Alexa or Jarvis or OK Nabu. This is great because it now means that your home assistant server doesn't have to be listening to everything. Just the Raspberry Pi is listening for wake words. Let's install it. First, let's install the dependencies necessary. Now let's actually go and install the actual open wake word code. Be sure that you are in the correct directory while doing this. PWD confirms that I am in slash home slash loft satellite. All right, let's run the command. This is gonna pull down the code from GitHub and then change into that directory and run the setup script. Okay, now we need to create a open wake word service, just like we did before for the Wyoming software. And then we're gonna go and modify the previous service so that it depends on open wake word. Let's do it. Copy this command here, which says sudo systemctl edit Wyoming open wake word service. And then we're gonna paste in this template here, just like we did before. And then we're gonna modify it slightly, exactly like we did before. So look for every instance of home slash pi and change that to home slash and then the name of your user, which in this case, again, is loft satellite. We'll do the same thing down here, loft satellite, and that's it. Press control X, the letter Y to save your buffer and then enter to exit. Now we're gonna go and modify our Wyoming satellite service. Let's concatenate in these parts right here manually. So you can see we're now saying that this Wyoming satellite service has a dependency on the Wyoming open wake word service. And then we're going to add these two parameters, wake URI and wake word name to our Wyoming satellite service. And I'm gonna set our wake word to hey underscore Jarvis. Don't forget to put your trailing slash on the previous last line. Okay, that looks perfect. Control X, Y, enter. Now let's uh, reload and restart the satellite service. And now let's make sure that that service is behaving as we would expect. All right, now we can see that open wake word has a green light next to it and that it is started. Everything should work. Let's test it. Go into your home assistant, go to settings, devices and services, and then Wyoming protocol, and find your satellite that you just set up. And you'll see right here that it has a sensor, assist in progress, which is currently off. Let's try the wake word. 
Hey Jarvis, is this working as expected? All right, it looks like we saw that the assistant progress sensor went from off to on and then back to off. Uh, worth mentioning, be sure and select your correct pipeline here. You can debug a little bit further if you want to by going back to your settings and then going to voice assistance, open up that pipeline, click on the three dots in the top right hand corner and go to debug. And you can actually see exactly what you said and how fast the cloud processed it. And you can you know, debug your entire pipeline. Okay, so if you've come this far, don't leave yet. There's a few more things to do. We're going to now tell the LEDs to turn on whenever you utter the wake word, so you get a visual cue. And also, there's quite a few optimizations that I want to recommend that you guys put in your configurations to make the whole system behave better. All right, let's get these LEDs going. Bring up your terminal and make sure that you are in your home directory. So currently, I'm in the Wyoming satellite directory, so let's go back. And now we are in our home directory. From there, let's paste in our command to begin the LED process. All right, and let's install the next command for GPIO0. Now let's test the service and make sure everything is working as expected. Great, we have a help page that comes up, which is exactly what we want to see. Let's create our third and last service for the LEDs. Copy the template, just as we've done before. Paste in your nano text editor, and let's make the modifications that we should be very familiar with by now. So now we're gonna edit our Wyoming satellite service, just like we did before, except this time we're going to make sure it includes not open wake word, but also it includes the LEDs. Under the unit section, add requires equals to mic underscore LEDs service. Then we're going to add a slash here, next line, and paste in our event URI. So this is saying that when an event happens, that it sends a signal over to a service that's running at port 10500, which is your LED service. Let's exit and save this updated service. And now we're gonna reload our Wyoming satellite service, which will also reload all of the services it depends on. Let's make sure that the LED service is running now. Okay, it looks like our LED service is running and it has a green light next to it, which is great. Let's test. Hey Jarvis, what time is it? Awesome, seems to be working perfectly. All right, there's a few changes that I made to the configuration during my testing and I wanna share those now and I'll explain what they are and why you should consider them yourself. So this is just an easy way for me to show you that this is what you have right now in your Wyoming satellite service on the left. And these are some recommendations that I'm making. The first recommendation is that you set this value right here for the A play command. Set it to 1600. Also, uh, dash dash SND command rate, set that to 1600. So add that line in. Those two things for me, they remove some crackling and distortion noise in the audio. Give that a shot if you have that distortion. SND volume multiplier is optional. I turned it way down to 10% because I'm plugging my voice assistant into an amplifier. And then down at the bottom down here are two wave files. These are the sounds that you will hear when you utter the wake word and when the command is done. All right, so now you could plug your speakers into here if you wanted to, or you could plug a headphone uh, jack into here and then like to RCAs, for example. In my case, I'm gonna plug mine into my amplifier so that the audio comes out of the in-ceiling speakers. So there's the Wyoming voice assistant mounted in the ceiling. If you're at all curious about how to do this in-ceiling install, check out my other video called the Stealth Voice Assistant Install, and we talk about the HTD hardware. Time to button this up and do a quick demo. Hey Jarvis, 
Turn off the media room ceiling lights and turn on the home theater. The media room ceiling lights have been turned off and the home theater has been turned on. All right, that's it. Please like, subscribe, add any comments down below. Check the description for links to hardware and to configuration files. See you guys in the next one. Proofhomes.net if you want an install like this done for suit.